In case you don't know, primavera in Italian means spring. So pasta primavera is just an amalgamation of all of the best things spring has to offer in one dish. Now you won't find this dish in Italy. However, it does live up to the Italian ethos of using what's available to you and what's local to you. There's no one proper way to make it, but today I'm gonna show you my way of making it. So let's just jump right into it. First festival we have is a leek. All we wanna do to prepare it, we're just gonna cut off that green part. You can save this for stock. Now, unfortunately, the store kind of cut the edge off. I kind of wanted it to hold it together, but what we're gonna do is just not cut it all the way down, leave it together by the root end, and just open it up so we can wash it. Let's just sort of peel those layers open and just rinse them clean of any dirt. And you can cut it in half, and sort of like an onion, slice it lengthwise into thirds, and then cut it kind of crosswise into thirds as well, into these little rectangular strips. We're just gonna cut these into like thirds. This is the thicker one, I'm gonna cut that in half. Some thick stems, just give them a cut in half. Broccolini may be more of a fall vegetable, but you know me, I'm gonna throw it in over here. Same thing with the asparagus. I've got this like thin pencil asparagus. If yours is thicker, you might want to give them a slice in half. The idea is that we're going to be using this tagliatelle and I want the vegetables to sort of play nicely with them, almost kind of behave like the strands of pasta are. So if you're using like a spaghetti or a tagliatelle like this, which I'll leave a link down in the description, you're gonna cut them a little bit differently maybe than if you're gonna use like a penne for it. So you gotta think about the way you're cutting it depending on the type of pasta you're using. We got a nice zucchini. Cut the top and the end off, cut it in half, cut them in thirds. And then into wedges. They're full of water, they're gonna shrink as they cook. Now this is a fava bean, also known as broad bean. Early spring vegetable, I really like it. It's better than getting English peas. English peas don't aren't really that sweet and they can turn very starchy very fast, which is what peas kind of do. And though I prefer them to English peas, they're kind of a pain to deal with. Here's how to harvest them. This is like the inner rib. I'm just gonna take a knife, separate the top, and then just peel it back. It's gonna allow you to open up the pod. Now, if you could believe it, these aren't actually fully harvested yet. There's another shell on these. We have to boil them in order to get this shell out and then you get the peas to use. It may seem absurd, it is what it is. Here's a sugar snap pea. My favorite vegetable of all time. If not favorite, one of them for sure. Here's how you harvest these guys. You take like the little hard stem end and much like the other one, you kind of pull the string up. Sometimes they don't have a string, but most of them will, and it's pretty inedible. Or if you get these fresh on a farmer's market, the sweetness you'll find in these is, it's one of my biggest joys in life. So really, when you find these at a farmer's market, you grab as much as you can. So I'm just gonna get them on the counter, starting on the curved side, give it one or two nice slices. Here's the whipped ricotta from last episode. We're gonna add some lemon zest straight to it. Just a few sprinkles, not too much. Then some lemon juice. Maybe from about half of a lemon. Some parm. You could use pecorino as well. A hefty dose. Now we're gonna use some pasta water too to cream it out once we get going. Get a pot of salted boiling water on the stove and once boiling, add the fava beans and cook for about 45 seconds to a minute depending on their size. Then get them out of the water, rinse with some cold water to stop the cooking and then simply peel away the exterior to finally reveal the fava bean. Now those fava bean shells turn the water red. It's okay to use, but I don't want it to dye my pasta, so I'm getting fresh water in a pot with salt, and I'm gonna bring it up to a boil. And I forgot to slice up some garlic, so I'm just gonna do that real quick, and now we can get started making the dish. Get a large saute pan on the stove and coat the pan with olive oil. First goes in the zucchini to develop nice color. Start it on medium high heat, but you're gonna actively manage the heat throughout the cook. Try to brown on all sides. 
Once that zucchini is nicely browned, go ahead and add the broccolini and the asparagus. And then we're gonna hit that with a little salt and then we're just gonna cook that the same way, try to create a little color and a little bit of browning. Now the water should be boiling. I'm gonna cook about five of these little nests of the tagliatelle and then add them to the water and let them unravel while carefully trying to loosen them up to ensure that they don't cook in those nests and clump. This pasta takes about eight minutes, so I'm gonna transfer it to the vegetables at around the seven minute mark and finish cooking it in there. Now that the longer cooking veg has softened and developed color, we can add the quicker cooking veg. So first I'm gonna go in with the leeks. We want those leeks to get some nice color. Add some more oil if needed and add a touch of salt to season the leeks. Then we're gonna go in with the garlic. I'm liking the color development and everything seems nicely cooked. So then I'm gonna go in with the fava beans and then the sugar snap peas and just give those guys a light cook. Hit it with another layer of salt to season that batch of vegetables. If you timed everything right, the pasta should be ready to add to the vegetables by the time everything's properly cooked. So transfer the pasta along with some of that pasta water to the vegetables and let that finish for the final minute of cooking. And then you wanna kill the heat before adding the cheese. Use the pasta water to loosen and to cream that ricotta to help it incorporate better into the pasta. Regular grainy ricotta will not melt like normal cheese. That's why using this creamy whipped ricotta from the last episode is the best for this. Add the creamy ricotta to the pasta with some more Parmigiano and some pasta water and work that ricotta into the pasta. Add pasta water until you've reached your desired creaminess. Everything is seasoned and the pasta's cooked through. And then we're ready to plate. I like to finish with a little dollop of ricotta on top, another hit of the lemon zest, and some more Parmesan cheese. It looks heavy. It's actually surprisingly light. It's got different textures. The vegetables are cooked differently, so you get contrasting textures. I'll leave the link down to this recipe below. Take advantage of that beautiful spring veg coming in. And make sure you go visit your local farmer's market. Support those guys always, especially now that the weather's nice. That's all that I have today. Take care of yourself and go feed yourself.